Before we get into anything else, I want to start with a quick update that affects everybody following the series. Energen Inc. had an issue with the shipment, so they actually lost the shipment that was meant to go out, and because of that, there's now a delay. Based on the email that I got from them, we're looking at roughly 14 days in delay before things are back on track. I know a lot of you are trying to get your hands on this already, so I just wanted to just put out the information out there up front so no one is confused or frustrated or wondering what's going on. Now, since we're here, I also want to clear something up early on because it keeps coming up. Yes, I am working with Energen Inc. I have been in contact with them for a long time now. I've been using their product for years. I talk about them on this channel and they do support what I do. Because of that, they gave me early access to JXL069, as you saw in the previous video. And there's simply no deeper story than that. I support their brand, they support me, and this is just me documenting the process from day one, just to share with you guys. That is also why I'm comfortable testing something like this, because I do talk with the people from Energen Inc. and I do trust them enough to apply their product, since I know firsthand that, in my opinion, they are trustworthy. Why am I even doing this in the first place? I'm not doing this because I think it replaces finasteride or dutasteride. I'm neither doing this because I think this is going to be some miracle cure or anything. And I'm definitely not doing this to sell any kind of hype to you guys. I'm doing this because there's a lot of discussion around this compound. A lot of noise and a lot of very strong opinions and very little structured, kind of documented long form testing. So the goal here is very simple. I want to stop my own hair loss because I know hair loss sucks so bad. And I want to share everything with you because it ruined my confidence when I was younger and I don't want anyone else to feel that way. That is why I'm willing to go that far. And I love having all of you with me on that journey. And that is all there is to it. And with that said, let's move on to the next topic. So I got a lot of good comments on the last video questions, skepticism, concerns, and some fairly decent criticism. So instead of just answering those one by one in text, I'm going to go to the main ones here and answer them as clearly as I can. So one of the first one here is how I already received it. And yeah, it hasn't been put up for sale yet. The short version is that they know that I was interested in this. We've been in contact regarding JXL. And they knew that I was interested in getting my own shipment as early as possible. So I got one around the shipment that was for sale. That is it. No other kind of magic there. The next one here, I got a few times that JXL069 is not PP405. They're not the same. Correct. And this is an important distinction. JXL is not PP405. They are related. They're in the same development lineage, but they're not identical compounds. The way I like to think about this is that JXL is part of the foundation that PP405 was later refined from. So when people hear comparisons, that doesn't mean it's the same thing. It means the same family and different stages, which is exactly why I'm being careful with expectations here. The next one here is, I've been using it for a week, just tried out my scalp and noticed shedding. Also, I did notice that sleeping was not as good. You got to be careful not to get it in your eyes or mouth. First of all, I do appreciate people sharing experiences like that. Any topical that affects signaling in the scalp can potentially cause an initial shed dryness and irritation depending on the dose, vehicle frequency, and individual sensitivity. That is exactly why I'm moving slowly with this and documenting everything week by week. So far, I have not noticed any of these effects, but that doesn't invalidate someone else's experience. It just means that responses vary, and that is exactly why structured reporting matters here. The next one. It appears you have very little hair thinning, but I am not sure. So that is fair. And context do matter here. I mentioned this before, but after my retratocyte experiment and losing about 15 kilos, I experienced a noticeable shed. Inflammation did go down as I expected when weight went down and the hair unfortunately also took a hit. Unfortunately, that can happen when you do these kind of experiments. It also happened to me with the pyrolutomide experiments. I lost a lot of hair with that experiment too. So the next one is... It's a 50-50 whether or not these research chems work. I've been there and done it. You're better biting the bullet getting a hair transplant done doing 
2.5 milligrams of testosterone a day, and you'll never need to worry about losing hair again. First of all, I don't disagree with parts of that. Finasteride and dutasteride are still the backbone of androgenic alopecia treatment. It cannot be changed. Hair transplants absolutely have their own place, but this series is not about rejecting already proven treatments. It's about exploring adjacent approaches, especially those that may influence the scalp environment itself. It's not supposed to go instead of the basics, it's supposed to go alongside the basics. Next one is, it's not a it's not just the hair follicle, the scalp skin it's the scalp skin itself in the male pattern areas are problematic. That is why transplanted hair will eventually be lost unless one is on finasteride or do testosterone. Once again, I do not disagree. That is also why I use stuff like the Growband 2.0 and microneedling. The environment matters just as much as the hormones in your body. So I completely agree with you. There's nothing here. But again, as I'm saying, I'm doing these kind of things alongside with other treatments. Again, a lot of these comments don't take into account that I am on dutasteride. I am doing microneedling. I am using IU5841 also alongside with this. So I'm not trying to replace anything. I'm just adding something new. Now, with all of that out of the way, let's get into the actual week one update. And I'll keep this very grounded and short because it's been one week. First, for obvious reasons, I have not noticed any visible changes in hair density, hairline or regrowth. And that is exactly what I would and I hope you also do expect at this stage. What I have noticed is arguably just as important as this early on. I haven't experienced any weird or unpleasant side effects, no irritation, no systemic symptoms, no sleep issues and nothing else concerning. And honestly, for week one, that is a good report. Hair changes take time, as we talked about tons of time on this channel. Safety signals tend to show up way earlier. So right now, the takeaway is simple. Stable, uneventful, and exactly where I want this to be after only seven days. I'll continue into week two with the same approach. And when once we hit week three, I'll update you once again. As always, I appreciate the comments, I appreciate the skepticism, and I appreciate you following along.